Good morning to all of you. Today in the law of trusts, let us discuss trespass to goods and chattels. Almost chattels are nothing but personal property. Previously, in uh, England, they used to call it as uh, charter. So just like our battery, even though we call it as criminal force, yeah, they call it as battery, just like chattel house. So don't get confused. Chattel means an alternative house for tangible personal property. Tangible means visible personal property. <coughs> Normally, it is a West Indian dwelling house. Chattel mortgage. So a security interest on a personal property which is tangible. So in Telugu we call it as Varanda, Vasara, Chuktillu or in our house there will be some small, small houses. So they are called as chattels. Now if something happens to your goods and chattels, how can you take a remedy by filing a case of tort is today's topic. <coughs> right. So first of all let us know trespass to goods means unlawful in or unlawfully disturbing the possession of goods by seizure by catching all the same or by removal or by direct act causing damage to the goods so with the removal with the seizure or with the some da damageful act definitely some damage should be done to the should be done to the goods then only it's called response to goods if I give you examples, it will be easy for you to appreciate. Suppose writing names. So if you go to the railway station and see the bathroom and definitely writing names or spoiling the seats of a bus or a train. So this is trespass to goods. Throwing stones on a vehicle. Then removing the spare parts from a vehicle. That means uh, deflating a tire. Beating the animals. Infecting the animals with the diseases by injections or something by giving some food. So killing animals by giving them poisonous food. This is more apt. Then shooting birds. So these are the incidents where you can uh, take action and respond to goods. But here a problem may come. Last year this uh, topic has come. <coughs> this concept is called as just dirty. Man means right of third party. Suppose you are having a vehicle in your position somebody threw stones on it just now i told you that is a case of trespass to goose if you file a case normally the defendant may raise an objection that you are not the owner you are not you are only third party just it that's all owner is someone else so let him come and comply so this defense they may take but it is not allowed because already i told you position is nine by tenth of ownership even though the C book is the name of other person, but if you are in position, definitely, if any defendant interferes with the goods of the plaintiff, definitely you can file a case against him and not the owner. Because you are in position, you can file a suit. Just it. This is a small issue. Now we'll go to the case laws. Famous case laws. Three uh, one or two case, three case laws we'll discuss. Number one. Armory versus uh, Billary Mine, 1721. Right, what happened is this armory, he was a boy actually, he was cleaning a chimney in a chattel in a small house in England. So he found a jewel in the chimney. While cleaning the same, he found a chimney. Immediately he took it to the valuer or goldsmith and gave it to him and asked him for the value. Of course, goldsmith can easily assess uh, as to who is the owner, who is the possessor, all these things. So he understood that this boy cannot come into possession of such property. Definitely, it might have been stolen by him or it might have been found somewhere. Therefore, he rejected to hand over possession of the property back to this boy. Now, <clears throat> this boy on his behalf, somebody filed a case. Ultimately, the court held that, yes, armory, that is the boy, he is entitled to recover the value from the jeweler because already he has converted the same or he has already Telugulo Atharadvani Kariginchi sir, melted, right. Second, <coughs> goods, please remember if there is a direct interference with the goods, unnecessarily, unreasonably, definitely to be tested. Previously I told you the case of uh, Kirk versus Gregory, 1876. So, somebody died. So Grigori, who is his sister-in-law, actually she has removed the gold jewelry 
from his person, of course, in order to keep it safely and kept it uh, in another room. Right? Okay, the function was over, the ceremony was over, and ultimately, when the executor of the deceased or the legal head of the deceased son or brother of the deceased asked about the property, for the jewels, when they were inquiring, she said that she has removed the same and kept them in another room. So I went to the other room brought uh, to bring the same, but incidentally, she found the same jewels missing. Right? They filed a case of tort, trespass to goods. Court held it, yes, 100% you are liable. Because <clears throat> you are not uh, the concerned person to take uh, to remove the jewelry and keep it in a safe place. So please remember, when you interfere with goods unnecessarily, unreasonably, you will be held liable for the trespass. Then, if you do it without lawful justification, there is another case. <clears throat> Crossell versus Thirill, S-I-R-L, 1948. Right. What happened is, the, uh, the Cyril's son, actually the defendant's son, he shot uh, the dog of the plaintiff, that is Crosswell, Creswell actually, Creswell, right? Since it was attacking the sheep and pigs of the defendant, right? Then, uh, now he filed, the plaintiff filed a case of tort, but the defendant negated saying that it is a very dangerous dog, all these things. But the court held that. It is for the boy or it is for the defendant's son to justify the killing and he could do so if the dog is so dangerous. That is to prove that it was attacking the animals and there was every necessity for shooting the same. Otherwise, you have to pay damages here, he has to pay damages. Then National Coal Board versus Evans, 1951. So this is also just like our uh, Rylands versus uh, Fletcher case, strict liability, right. So the National Coal Board, it has uh, entrusted the work of uh, excavating the coal to subcontractors, right. So they were excavating, while excavating uh, the workers, they damaged the underground cables of uh, Mr. Evans. So he filed a case of uh, trespass to his uh, goods. Of course, the court held that there is no fault on the appellants because they did not know the lying of the underground cables there, therefore not liable, right? A modern case law is there, it happened in 1990, of course I will tell, normally I tell in the Information Technology Act, it is also a case of chattels, so personal tangible property. <clears throat> AOL versus LCGM INC 1990. AOL means you may know it is a very popular site, America Online. So this LCGM is a pornographic site. So actually the defendant, that is uh, uh, the so-called pornographic uh, site, uh, somehow sent a spam to the AOL customers uh, by forging AOL domain name, right? So actually, they wanted to lure the customer. Suppose if you see the beautiful bare body of a woman, normally you tend to go to the net. Is it not? So they wanted to hack the personal details of the person. Like immediately, AOL understood the same and they sent a notice to LCGM to cease and desist. So stop and uh, do, don't do that actually. That is a form of letter, cease and desist letter, but they did not uh, comply. Then they filed a suit of trespass to the chartels. It was allowed and injunction was granted. So friends, this is briefly regarding a trespass to goods. It's an important topic. Of course, I don't know whether you will get a question or not, better to learn the same. Thank you.